we'll be discussing division patterns with zeros. We're going to go through a set of problems and complete the pattern. Let's start with this first problem. What divided by nine equals one? We know that anything divided by itself results in the value one. For example, 10 divided by 10 equals one. Five divided by five also equals one. 300 divided by 300 also equals one. Anything divided by one itself is one. So nine divided by nine is one. Now, if we go up and add a zero and we want to know what divided by nine equals 10, we know we are going up by counting by 10. So if we wanna add a zero onto the one, we also add a zero onto the nine. 90 divided by nine equals 10. We see as everything goes up by a power of 10, so does this number. Let's go up another power of 10. Now we've added another zero and we, we wanna know what divided by nine equals 100. So we must add another zero to the 90 and it's now 900 divided by nine equals 100. Let's go up by another power of 10. What divided by nine equals 1,000? Let's add another zero to that. 9,000 divided by nine equals 1,000. Looking at the pattern, what we see is as the answer goes up by a factor of 10 and we add one zero to the answer, we also add one zero to the divisor because it's also going up by a factor of 10. Let's do another problem so we can see the pattern. Now we wanna know the answer. We're going the other way. We know that any number divided by itself is one, right? We did 100 divided by 100 is one. 300 divided by 300 is one. So eight divided by eight is one. Now our divisor has gone up by a factor of 10. We've added a zero and we're now asking for 80 divided by eight. Our answer will have one more zero than the previous answer. So we place a one and we add another zero. We've gone, our divisor has gone up by a factor of 10 and our answer has gone up by a factor of 10. Let's look at the next problem. 800 divided by eight. We've added another zero, which means we must add another zero to our answer. We've gone up by a factor of 10. Now we're up to 8,000 divided by eight. Again, three zeros in the question, three zeros in the answer. In the same manner as the previous problem, as each divisor goes up by a factor of 10, so does the answer. And we add a zero to the answer as we add a zero to the divisor. Let's look at another question. As we talked about previously, any number divided by itself equals one. So we wanna know what divided by five equals one. Well, it's the number itself, five. Now we're gonna do the same process. We're gonna go from one to 10 in our answer, adding a zero, which means we add a zero to our divisor. 50 divided by five equals 10. Let's go up another factor of 10 to an answer of 100, which means our divisor gets an additional zero and goes up to 500. And lastly, 1000 is in our answer, so we must have three zeros in our divisor. Please note though that we are always dividing by the same number five. If this number changes, these numbers are also going to change and we won't just be adding zeros. So make sure you pay attention to what's being divided by. It must be the same number 
as you add the factors of 10. Let's do another one. This case, our answer is not going to be one. We're gonna start with eight divided by four. <clears throat> How many times does four go into eight? Well, let's see. Let's start with eight. We'll take one four out here. And we can pull another four out here. There are two fours in eight. So eight divided by four is two. Now remember, our number's staying the same. We're always dividing by four, which means our answer will always start with a two. As we go up and add a zero, we add zeros to our answers. 80 divided by four is two with one zero. Now what about 800 divided by four? Two with how many zeros? Here we have two zeros, so in our answer we have two zeros. Now 8,000 divided by four. Two and how many zeros? In our question we have three, in our answer we have three. So we see the same pattern emerging. As our divisor goes up by a factor of 10 and gets one extra zero, so does our answer. Next question. Three divided by three. We know that any number divided by itself always results in one. What happens when we add a zero to our divisor? 30 divided by three. We add a zero to our answer. What about when we add two zeros to our divisor? We add two zeros to our answer. What about three zeros? Three zeros in the answer. We see the same pattern emerging. As the divisor goes up by 10, and we add a zero each time, we add a zero each time to our answer. Halfway done. So this is a very similar problem set, but now we're working the other way. What number divided by three equals one? We know that every number divided by itself is one. For example, five divided by five is one, 10 divided by 10 is one, and three divided by three is one. What number divided by three gives us 10? Well, we take the same number and we add a zero to it. Now, when we go up and we've added two zeros to our answer, we add two zeros to our divisor. And when we go up to another factor of 10, we have three zeros in our answer, three zeros in our question. The same pattern emerges. As we go up by 10 in our answer, we go up by 10 in our question. Let's look at this pattern. What number, nine divided by what number equals one? We know that every number divided by itself is one, so nine divided by nine is one. When we go up, now by a factor of 10, 90 divided by what equals 10? Hmm, this is confusing, right? I wonder what it is. Well, it looks like we've got the zeros in the question and in the answer, so we don't need to add any more zeros to the dividend. Let's look at this question. 900 divided by what equals 100? Again, same number of zeros in both the answer and the question, so the dividend remains the same, nine. Let's look at 9,000 divided by what equals 1,000? As long as the zeros match up, your dividend will remain the same. Three zeros in 9,000, three zeros in 1,000. The answer is still nine. Mm. Seven divided by seven equals what? Again, we know that any number divided by itself is one. What about when we go up by a factor of 10? What about 70 divided by seven? Remember, we need the same number of zeros in our question and our answer if the dividend remains the same. 70 divided by seven must have one zero in the answer. 700 divided by seven must have two zeros in the answer. 7,000 divided by seven must have three zeros. Nine divided by what equals one? 
Well, any number divided by itself equals 1. What about 90 divided by what equals 10? Let's check here. We have 1, 0 in the question and 1, 0 in the answer, so the dividend remains the same. Again, 900 divided by what equals 100? We have two zeros in the question and two zeros in the answer, so the dividend remains the same. Let's go up to three zeros. Three zeros in the question, three zeros in the answer. The zeros can be ignored. Nine divided by one, well, that's nine. Last one, let's complete the pattern. <clears throat> eight divided by eight. Anything divided by itself is always one. What about when we add a zero to it and it's 80 divided by eight? Well, we add a zero to the answer. What about when we go up to 800? We add two zeros to the answer. And when we go up to 8,000, we add three zeros. We notice when the dividend stays the same and we add a zero to the divisor and we go up by a factor of 10, then our answer also goes up by a factor of 10. Excellent job. That concludes our video on division patterns with zero.